good morning good afternoon and good evening one and all as per your time zones ushya i think i am audible ushya yes ma'am yes ma'am thank you pushya it is my pleasure to welcome all the participants for the 17th international webinar series of nac i welcome the speaker of the today's international webinar dr jeni wakar consultant to the ceo on technical affairs oman authority for academic accreditation and quality assurance of education oman i welcome dr devender kaure sir deputy advisor nac and all the respected participants from all over the country who are here to share their knowledge and vast experience in the field of higher education in the country i welcome once again one and all for the today program now i request dr devender kaure sir deputy advisor nac to please deliver the opening remarks sir please dr devender kaure sir yeah thank you dr ruchi am i audible yes sir please come sir yeah thank you uh, namaste to everybody yeah namaste dr jani walker madam it's a warm good morning from india dr ruchi am i audible yes yes yeah yeah so <clears throat> yeah so nice of you so uh, a warm welcome again as dr ruchi madam has already shared uh, it's our pleasure that we are here to listen dr jenny walker who is uh, specifically a very good academician and a good speaker from the consultant of uh, coe on technical affairs oman authority for academic accreditation it's uh, from sultanate of oman and then our coordinator dr ruchi tripathi my good colleagues in nag and dear participants from the different parts of the world who have joined for this webinar through youtube facebook twitter and webex platform now i on behalf of nag welcome you all for this 17th webinar in the series of international webinar organized by nag we Uh, pledge that in addition to the improvement in quality in higher education in india we would like to learn from the different parts of the world from different agencies of the world that how this quality can be upgraded uh, that may be beneficial or can be beneficial for the stakeholders of higher education around our country and in the world too so this series of webinar we proceed with in nutshell i would like to share with you about the nac this national assessment and accreditation council is an autonomous institution established by university grants commission of india to assess and accredit the institution of higher education all over the country and this is done on the basis of some core values uh, our whole assessment and accreditation process which is being done uh, and it's unique in nature that is uh, it is done on both subjective and objective part majority of the things are in objective in nature i think so uh, this is an agency in the world uh, which has this dual concept uh, majority which is being taken care by objective so what we call it as a quantitative matrix the uh, all this is based on our core values that is the contribution to national development fostering global competencies among student inculcating value system in student promotion of use of technology and quest for excellence you know friends in our country we have around 55165 number of higher education institution it is the second higher education uh, uh, system in the world uh, catering to around 38.5 millions of student uh, for your information of course the population of australia is less than that and canada so it's almost 25 means around uh, 25 million or something around 3 uh, 30 million and our student population itself is 38.5 million so it's a big one nac in its 27th years of service of quality assurance is in the form of assessment accreditation india it's from since 27 years i have already shared with you we were established in around 1994 uh, and since 27 uh, long years of experience we have accredited 
means number of accreditation if you talk about it's around 13800 almost 14000 number of accreditation uh, we have done and again uh, it is highest comparing any of the accreditation agency in the world this is a unique thing about uh, nac and this national assessment our body that is national assessment accreditation council is a member of international network of quality assurance agencies in uh, higher education that is inquire that you know and similarly is of asia pacific quality network apqn needless to say that nac has also provided leadership and its good practices to different countries uh, many of the nearby countries uh, uh, are taking the help from our body uh, and moving ahead with the uh, uh, quality parameters what we adopt and accordingly there are certain changes and we are here to help each and everybody uh, who are in tune with us now it is a time for international cooperation so what we are moving a step ahead for international cooperation and mutual learning during this post covid 19 pandemic period nac has also organized with this step ahead we are moving ahead step by step almost 100 national and international webinars out of the 17 are international and benefiting around a million uh, academicians within india and abroad so we uh, have a target of much more within collaboration with uh, good countries like sultanate of uban we would like to learn from other quality agencies and networks about their best practices and how do they do accreditation because every country every accreditation agency are unique in nature in their concept in their motto in their process so we are here always to learn and according to learning according to feedbacks we also keep on finding our assessment accreditation process nac would like to share its best practices especially the ict integration what we are doing in unique in nature that i already shared that is a quantitative part of assessment accreditation quality assurance system thus i will end my this all opening remarks with a quote a very important one and which has a very specific meaning okay uh, before that i hope that with the discourse of dr jenny walker which uh, already dr ruchi tripathi has narrated about her she is a very unique uh, 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 speaker uh, and she will be talking on this uh, very important concept which uh, uh, the sultanate of oman is going ahead that is a building a culture of quality in the education sectors in oman we in nac and the noteworthy academicians will get immensely benefited by this by her discourse today so at the end that quote what i was to move ahead with that if we keep doing friends it is very important and we believe in all these things that if we keep doing what we are doing we will keep getting what we are getting if we want to get the results we have never got before then we have to do the things we have never done before this is something very specific for everybody to understand and believe we also move ahead with that concept so with that belief and concept my best wishes for this webinar from the nac uh, there will be a very good interaction and benefit for all the stakeholders who are attending this webinar thank you very much namaste thank you very much thank you sir for your wonderful opening remarks thank you so much now i like to introduce speaker dr jeni walker consultant to the ceo on technical affairs oman authority for academic accreditation and quality assurance of education dr jeni walker has many years of experience in quality assurance of higher education including as a former deputy ceo for technical affairs oman authority in oman and currently as consultant to the under secretary of oman authority ceo in all technical matters including the review of schools as former associate dean of a university college in mascot now it's a national university she gained first hand experience in the development of the quality management system aside from academia dr walker is a professional travel writer member of british guild a travel writer and a fellow of the royal geographical society and writes regularly for lovely planet publication i request dr speaker uh, today's speaker dr jenny walker from oman to deliver on the topic uh, building a culture of quality in education sector of oman dr jenny please thank you very much indeed yeah, uh, just make as your presenter to jenny ma'am Okay, I'll just 
if you could activate yes, the ah, yeah. lovely yeah it's visible jenny ma'am just make it large right just here we go yeah it's okay visible. yeah absolutely can i just check you can hear me yeah you are audible ma'am you are also visible ppt is visible go ahead please thank you very much indeed um firstly uh, a very good afternoon to everybody and um, it's a great pleasure to send greetings from the Sultanate of Amman today, and many thanks for the very kind and generous words of, of welcome uh, in, in the address by Dr. Uh, Devenda and by uh, Dr. Ruchi. Uh, it's a real pleasure to deliver this presentation today. Um, I would like to share um, some of our experience in building a culture of quality in the uh, education sector, in particular the higher education sector uh, here in the Sultanate of Oman. And my presentation um, is going to cover a little snapshot about um, Oman today. I'd, I'm sure many of you might have been here, but um, perhaps some people might be curious as to where we are and, and what kind of activities that we carry out uh, in terms of quality assurance in this country. Um, I will then talk a little bit about some of our specific processes, um, in particular to do with the qualifications framework, which is still in its pilot stage. Uh, I'll be talking about our institutional um, accreditation activities, which are the core part of what we do here in the uh, OAAA QA. And uh, I will then briefly touch on our program external quality assurance activities, which we're currently uh, implementing uh, in a small way at the moment, but we're about to launch um, across the, the country from 2022. Um, and then I'll conclude the presentation by um, give, briefly mentioning some key features that are part of all of our uh, external quality assurance activities and show how those align with our values. Um, and lastly, I'll uh, spend a little bit of time uh, explaining how we express the results for the public. Um, I, in common with many other agencies, um, we use a lot of short forms and, and acronyms, so uh, forgive me if I just uh, run through a bit of terminology with you, in, just in case I slip back to the abbreviations. Uh, EQA, External Quality Assurance Activity. OQF, that's the Oman Qualifications Framework. I'll be explaining what all of these are uh, in, in due course. IQA, that's the first stage of our accreditation uh, process for institutions. ISA is the second stage, uh, which involves institutional standards assessment and reassessment. Uh, we have a general foundation program that is mandatory in this country for all school leavers, um, and we quality audit the programs that the HEIs run uh, in that capacity. And uh, I don't know if you use the same term, but we, we refer to higher education institutions uh, as HEIs. And then, of course, there's our very long um, abbreviation for our, our authority name with the Oman Authority for Academic Accreditation and the Quality Assurance of Education. So um, I promised you a little snapshot about Oman and, and education in Oman, and um, I, I, I'm sure that many of you will know uh, where Oman is, and we're obviously neighbours across the sea, albeit, but uh, uh, we're also part of the, um, the, Gulf, uh, the Gulf network. Um, uh, the country is marked by... Uh, it's, it's a desert region, but it's also a very green region because we have very high mountains here. And the country is, ha, is very distinct from its neighbours in that it has a strong heritage that is obviously uh, both Islamic and Arabic in, uh, in nature. In terms of education here, 
Um, I, I don't know how much uh, you might know about the history of Oman, but uh, the former Sultan, Sultan Qaboos bin Said, he brought in a, a, a remarkable, what we call a renaissance here to this country in 1970. Um, and at that time, he established the key principles of education for all, regardless of location or means or gender. Um, and of course, we're uh, reaping the fruits of that wisdom now. Uh, the first university in, in Amman was founded in 1986, and um, now a very high percentage of school le leavers enter higher education. The present Sultan, uh, Sultan Haith, His Majesty Sultan Haitham bin Tariq, he took over in 2020, and he has implemented Vision 2040, and under this uh, visionary um, strategy, uh, education has a very important place. Um, the a few fast facts for you. Um, we yeah, are completely in contrast to the Indian uh, context. Um, we, we have a very modest number of, of higher educational institutions. In fact, only 41. There are 2,000 schools. Um, but they, the, the population is, is equally small and uh, education reaches all parts of the country. Um, currently, we undertake uh, 20, we're undertaking 25 quality assurance activities this year, um, which again sounds very fractional <laughs> compared with uh, the Indian experience, but uh, nonetheless takes all our time and resources. Um, COVID, in common with everywhere else in the world, has been an issue for us here. And at this very moment in time, we're glad to say that schools are again open um, at schools and, and higher education institutions. Uh, but we've had to respond uh, through various measures to make sure that we um, keep, continue to support the sector in their needs at this time. Some of the things that we've done with this regard is we've uh, rescheduled for one year to, to give a grace period to HEIs. We've brought in a plan B that enables us to carry out our uh, external quality assurance visits in a virtual mode or in a hybrid mode. Um, and we've undertaken an indicator review to make sure that our standards are uh, and their associated criteria are uh, still fit for purpose despite uh, or, or, or covering distance learning. In terms of um, how Oman has built a, a, a culture of quality here in the Sultanate, um, I, the, the current emphasis is very much on on the quality of education rather than the quantity. Um, and that this has been enshrined in various, so, so quality assurance has been enshrined in various strategies for uh, well ev over a decade now. Uh, nonetheless, we still believe that it's uh, very important for each individual HEI to be responsible for its own, uh, for the effectiveness of its own internal systems. Um, but we're there to support that, uh, that activity, and we do this through having, in, in collaboration with a, um, a, a, a wonderful network of external reviewers who are part of our external reviewer register who bring their expertise to bear on the, uh, the quality assurance activities of the sector. Within 20, Vision 2040, um, there's, a, 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 as I mentioned, a, a real emphasis on rebuilding the educational uh, system to uh, to make it fit for purpose in uh, in the future, and obviously uh, EQA is at the heart of that. And and I'd like to suggest that so are we as the uh, agency w that is that carries the mandate for uh, for assuring quality in the sector. Uh, we're an independent government entity. We're uh, established by royal decree in 2010. Uh, and obviously our main role is to provide confidence to the public uh, in the quality of higher education in Oman. Um, and to uh, encourage internal improvements within the sector uh, 
um, to better serve uh, the, the students who study there and uh, to meet the aims of the country in, uh, in the future. So, uh, very briefly, our vision is to assure the world of the quality of education in Oman. This is uh, very important to us because, obviously, uh, graduates who wish to continue their studies in other countries, um, including in India, and who, uh, who, or who wish to take up employment outside of the region, um, they rely on, uh, on us to uh, to to give some assurance of the standards that uh, of, that are prevailing in the country. Uh, so our mission is to guide and support the whole education sector, not just higher education, but school uh, school education as well, to meet the relevant national priorities and objectives while maintaining internationally benchmark standards. And indeed, something we're very proud of is that all of our processes have been benchmarked internationally with at least uh, 30 different agent agencies. These are our various values, um, integrity, professionalism, transparency, reflectiveness. Um, reflectiveness, we, we uh, cast the, the mirror internally as well as externally, and we uh, apply the same uh, culture of, of self-reflection uh, to our own processes and in fact we are currently undergoing a review of all our institutional standard assessment uh, um, activities at present prior to re-accreditation uh, the year after next. Our other uh, values I will return to towards the end of the presentation uh, in, in the context of how we apply them. So. Um, our roles and responsibilities are uh, much the same as any other quality assurance agency. Um, it's to ensure uh, uh, that uh, the, the school education, the higher education in Oman uh, is, is fit for purpose. Uh, we do this through various different activities. We assess public and private schools. This um, this is currently, this is a new part of our mandate. It was, uh, uh, came under our auspices at the beginning of 2021. So we're still um, working through the process of, um, of uh, expanding this, uh, th this part of our remit. Uh, our core business at the moment is very much in terms of accrediting public and private HEIs. We also uh, accredit the their programs, their academic programs, and the foundation programs. We're also in the middle of developing a comprehensive uh, qualifications framework, uh, we, and that will involve the listing and alignment of qualifications. And uh, we've recently been asked to advise on international accreditation activities uh, as well. All of our processes are um, summarized on our website, and this is our main, uh, the main way in which we make our activities public. Um, if you wanted to look us up there at all, you'd be very welcome. And I'm glad to say that uh, with our new remit, we will be moving uh, to a new uh, website very soon. These are the elements of the National Quality Management System. Um, I don't, uh, given that we um, have a limited uh, amount of time, I, I won't uh, go into details about all of these things, but I would just like to say a few words about our, uh, our, the piloting of our Oman qualifications framework. Um, I'll then give you a little bit of detail about our uh, accreditation systems. And I'll be talking about our program accreditation system, which um, is about to be launched in 2022. So if we start, if, if we may, with the Oman qualifications framework, um, it, back in 2010, uh, the former, our, our former entity, o Oman o OAC, was made responsible for uh, this framework. But at that time, it only covered higher education. Uh, in 2014, the Education Council um, expanded the, 
the remit of what then became OAAA uh, to cover the vocational, professional and school education sectors. And then finally this year, uh, as I just mentioned, um, we became OAAA QA and uh, we um, are now um, responsible for um, aligning foreign and international qualifications as well. This is what the current uh, qualifications framework looks like. Um, there are 10 levels and these describe the minimum credit points and hours for each level. Um, and the framework, as I mentioned, covers all, all types of uh, education uh, with the assumption that, uh, uh, that this will facilitate lifelong le learning and enable um, uh, potential students to become part of the education system at any point in their uh, their careers and they can uh, articulate articulate across the different pathways um, without uh, loss of time. Um, so it's facilitating, uh, as I say, lifelong learning. How are we going about the implementation of this framework? Well, there are two uh, main processes that we will be uh, running. One, one is the listing of um, um, of qualifications. Uh, the evaluation for this will be carried out by a listing body, which which uh, that, that in essence is is us uh, of all the units, modules, and courses of a program that lead to a qualification. Um, and that lead uh, in order to reach uh, um, OQF level and credit values. Uh, and then there's a, a process of alignment. Um, this is a process of comparing and evaluating a foreign or international qualification against uh, each of the OQF level descriptors to determine its position in relation to the Amman qualifications framework. As I mentioned, we're currently piloting this whole uh, this whole process, and uh, we were uh, initially going to run this in very close uh, partnership with our program uh, standards assessment. But we've recently decoupled the two processes, and that's why we're running um, another uh, pilot program to check the feasibility of the current uh, system. I'd like us to move on, if we may, to our institutional um, quality assurance activities um, at higher e education level. Uh, we have nine standards, and as mentioned before, these are uh, internationally benchmarked. They cover governance and management, student learning by coursework and by um, research. They cover staff research and consultancy. Uh, there's a very important standard uh, relating to industry and community engagement. We cover academic support services, student support services, and of course staff uh, and staff support services and general facilities. So um, there is no one standard that's more important to than another. There's no waiting involved. Uh, no. Um, uh, weightage uh, applied to any particular criteria, criterion. Um, there are 79 criteria uh, spread across the nine standards. The accreditation system has uh, been running since um, 2008 when uh, the first stage uh, of the system was brought into place and this is the institutional quality audit uh, process. Um, this the quality audit process is all about um, institutions conducting self analysis and then um, reporting on that, and then uh, a panel from uh, from our institution um, involving international uh, uh, external reviewers will then. Um, express the re results in terms of CARs, commendations, affirmations, and recommendations. Um, and these, the, the report is made public. Uh, after four years, the institution will then undergo stage two standards assessment. Um, and in this is 
um, this is uh, where an institution has to um, report against the nine benchmark standards. And if they can show that they have met all nine standards, they become accredited uh, for uh, five years. However, if they're not able to uh, meet the standards on the first attempt, they are eligible to undergo a reassessment process. Um, and that, uh, at, however, if they're, if they're not successful in the reassessment process, um, they are, uh, the, the, the system is terminated, the, the um, accreditation process is terminated. To date, uh, 20, over 20 institutions have undergone uh, institutional standards assessment and um, um, only five institutions were able to uh, meet the standards at the first attempt. Um, and now a reassessment is being carried out for a number of different institutions. Um, if you're wondering why we have a two-stage approach, um, this is because of the relatively uh, new nature of, of higher education in, in Oman. Um, and it was felt that uh, institutions or the sector at large needed a little bit of time to embed the concept of quality assurance within their internal systems. And uh, they only undergo quality audit once. And then quality, uh, the second stage uh, standards um, assessment or the, the accreditation part of the process, uh, that takes place in a cyclical way. All our processes are subject to appeal. We uh, express the accreditation outcomes in terms of the, the following um, uh, nomenclature. Uh, that we make a distinction between uh, those institutions that are accredited and those that um, uh, demonstrate good or best practice. Um, but equally, we also indicate that if they are unable to meet the standards at the first attempt, uh, we give some indication of performance. So uh, if, a, if um, we, we distinguish between whether they're conditionally accredited um, and ha have need only to meet one or two of the applicable standards, uh, as opposed to whether they're on probation, uh, which is if they uh, are required to meet three or more of the uh, applicable standards after uh, undergoing ESA. So, um, as just in summary, then our uh, first stage involves um, an HEI judging the effectiveness of their systems against their own goals and uh, expectations or objectives, and the report is made from OAAA is made public. To date, 51 quality audit reports have been issued. Uh, covering the quality audit of 63 HEIs. Um, so pretty much all of our institutions have been through this activity now. Um, institution standards assessment then, by contrast, involves uh, an HEI uh, performance being judged against a set of the, the set of nine uh, standards. It's summative in nature and the only the results are made public the report is confidential. To date, um, 25 institu institutions have undergone ESA uh, and uh, eight I uh, reassessments have taken place. So there we have a little summary of the difference of, between our two uh, main activities. Um, but looking to the future uh, standards assessment we feel has um, has we can see the improvement that uh, the the whole two stages of our accreditation pro uh, process has um, made to the quality of education in 
higher education in the country. Uh, we can see that very visibly demonstrated between ESA and and ISR, the the reaccreditation, the a big pardon, the reassessment process, because in that time. Uh, and generally, institutions are given one year to uh, meet the meet the standards that they weren't able to meet at the first attempt. And we can really see the difference in their activities uh, through that reassessment process. Um, I mentioned that we are uh, currently bringing in program standards assessment, and um, we already conduct some part of program uh, assessment. We do this through uh, looking at the general foundation program. I, I don't know if you have an equivalent in all parts of, uh, of, of India, but um, in Oman, it, again, partly because of the relative uh, newness of, the, of a formal education system. It's only been up and running since 1970. So this, this has entailed um, a little bit of a gap growing between the secondary education and the tertiary education. And that gap is, is being filled currently by the general uh, foundation program. Um, and this program is seen as vital to the success of students who are studying in higher education. And over 90% of all students uh, who are going into an HEI are involved in some form of, of foundation. Um, we have standards that apply to that as well. And these standards focus on four main areas, um, possibly one of the most important of which is obviously study skills where in which uh, problem solving and critical thinking uh, are emphasized. Um, many, if not most uh, of the programs in, in Oman are offered in the the medium of the English language. And so there's quite a bit of emphasis placed on, on that as well. Our program quality assurance um, processes follow a very similar pattern to um, the one I described to you earlier con uh, concerning institutional uh, EQA. Um, the only difference is that we we don't have a first step, a first stage, so there's no quality audit associated with program uh, accreditation. And in fact, only those institutions that have already been accredited are able to proceed to accredit their programs. Um, we're, we um, are currently piloting these processes. It's been a long journey, actually, and one of the things that we are um, proud about is the fact that we uh, collaborate with uh, our external reviewers, not just in terms of the quality assurance activities that we conduct on a routine basis, um, but also for consultation uh, for all, for in the development of all of our new systems. And we really listen to the sector as well. And part of the journey that we've been on for in introducing PSA has been the rationalization of the standards from nine in 2014 to six in uh, 2015 and to three in 2018. And now uh, we've finally decided that institutions, uh, programs uh, um, need only to be assessed against two of three applicable standards. Um, the reason for uh, making this decision was that uh, there was quite a bit of overlap uh, between inst ISA and PSA, and uh, the, there is a, a real risk, uh, especially in a small sector perhaps, and when the cycle of accreditation is only five years in length, there is a real risk of um, EQA fatigue, if you like, or, or quality assurance uh, uh, fatigue. Not not that anyone is is fatigued by the actual uh, quality assurance activities, and, and self reflection is is becoming very much embedded in in the life of all institutions now. But but in terms of having to keep reporting on that uh, activity, um, and so it was felt that uh, the the new PSA should very much focus uh, on the program itself. And um, 
I'm glad to say that the manual has now been developed. We've just literally just uh, this month completed the four uh, pilot um, uh, standards assessments, and we're about to uh, launch or schedule for launch all of our um, um, programs. We, we have about 800 programs running in, in the Sultanate, uh, and that will commence, inshallah, uh, next year. So, if I may, uh, with the remaining time, I'd just like to touch on some of the features of, uh, of, of our EQA activities that are, um, that are uh, shared by all of our EQA activities. Um, we are very uh, determined that there should be an equal opportunity for improvement in all institutions, whether they're public or they're private, um, and we apply the same standards, the same processes, and we um, we give the same, we express the outcomes in the same way, whether uh, regardless of the status of uh, the institutions involved. Um, this uh, aligns with uh, our basic value, which is integrity. Uh, we believe in fairness, and um, to that end, uh, we uh, do whatever we can to ensure uh, that our activities are carried out in, uh, in with integrity. Um, we, uh, I mentioned many times throughout this presentation, our register of external reviewers. Uh, these come from all uh, from all countries, um, from Australia, many from India, many from uh, other places in the subcontinent, uh, from Africa, from uh, and from Europe and and USA. Um, and they also come not only from an academic background, but they also drawn from industry and uh, from uh, quality assurance backgrounds. Uh, this we feel is one of the ways in which we are able to remain accountable to all our stakeholders because we we um, we we listen to uh, uh, to. What people uh, in in uh, on the ground, if you like, in industry are telling us, um, and we're able to do that as a direct result of the way in which we engage with our external reviewers. Um, we also uh, train, and I'll come to that in, in a moment, uh, to build local capacity. We all our um, activities are absolutely based on evidence. Um, we all our uh, um, all our reviewers must sign, uh, and indeed our board members have to sign a, a conflict of interest declaration, uh, so that uh, we can be assured that uh, judgments are being based only on uh, the evidence that's that's provided by the HEI. Uh, obviously, this comes down to basic professionalism, um, and we we believe that uh, uh, in bringing um, the skills, knowledge, and best judgment of people from uh, a range of backgrounds uh, to apply evidence-based judgments helps us to carry out our mission effectively. We adopt what we call an ADRI approach. ADRI is the um, it, it's one way of analysing whether a system is effective. Uh, there are lots of different models for doing this, but we uh, we particularly um, have embraced this one as being appropriate to our needs. Uh, it stands for the approach. In other words, what policies uh, has an HEI in place? Um, has the approach been benchmarked? What performance indicators are there? Uh, how is um, how are these policies um, embedded within the context of of various uh, institutional plans? Uh, then we look at the deployment. Have the uh, policies and strategies that uh, uh, t that are part of the approach been deployed effect effectively and and as as on paper? Uh, what are the results? Is the HEI 
uh, measuring these results against the goals and targets of the performance indicators. And finally, uh, what opportunities for improvement uh, um, are the HEIs managing to identify? Um, what lessons are they learning? And, and what, what, uh, uh, what have they done about areas where they have identified opportunities for improvement? Um, international benchmarking is one of the ways in which we we help uh, our uh, we, we try to to help our um, higher education institutions in Oman to uh, understand what will bring value uh, to the to the education space um, and uh, indeed this aligns with one of our core values which is a commitment to international good and best practice um, and all not just our standards but all our processes are also derived from uh, our from our own determination to benchmark our uh, practices and make sure that we align with best practice um, i think our our quality assurance process looks very similar to um, to many others, uh, as a result of this, um, an HEI undertakes a self-study. We form a panel uh, of these international uh, and locally based experts. The HEI submits their self-study. Um, there's various pre-meetings. Then there's uh, a visit to the institution's campus. Uh, during COVID, these were carried out uh, uh, um, remotely. Um, and then the report goes through various iterations uh, and it is uh, approved by our board, both in a preliminary way and in a final way. Um, and it, a very important part of the process for us is the HEI's comment on uh, draft V5. Um, and uh, this, this enables them to uh, identify any shortfalls in their uh, in in the report and gives an opportunity to correct inaccuracies. Um, panels are non-prescriptive in uh, the way that they approach these uh, the quality assurance activities, and they uh, even though they're coming from diverse backgrounds. Uh, it's very important to us that they respect that diversity is something that's also apparent in the HE uh, sector as well. And in fact, uh, um, institute, we, it's enshrined within our activities that uh, through the generic nature of, of our standards, that um, institutions should be allowed to carry out their activities in the way that they feel best meets the uh, needs of their own particular uh, students. This um, um, reflectiveness we mentioned earlier um, and uh, has been one of our values and this enable, has enabled us to uh, continue um, our activities, including training uh, of our local um, uh, yeah, of local participants in the sector. In terms of how we communicate the results, we are we aim to be very transparent in what we do. I mentioned before that we have a um, a, a website where we share the results of our institutional accreditation activities. Uh, and the reports of our quality audits. And we have a way of not ranking the, the institutions, but of uh, enabling the, uh, uh, our public stakeholders to, uh, to measure the performance of one uh, institution against another, uh, according to the, the areas of, of delivery uh, of, 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 of um, according to the standard, if you like, that is of most importance to them. That completes uh, my little introduction to our external uh, quality assurance activities in this country. It's been a pleasure and I thank you for uh, uh, giving us time and space to share our experiences with you. Many thanks. Good day. 
Thank you, Dr. Jaini, for your pleasant speech and nice presentation. Very wonderful. Uh, now I request the participants, if you have any query, questions related to the topic, may please raise so that Dr. Jaini Walker will clear your doubts. Dr. Mrs. Pusya, Pusya Lakshmi, can you see any queries there from the participants? Then you request to uh, just unmute him. Yes, ma'am. As of now, I couldn't see any virtual hand raised. I request the participant to raise their virtual hand if they have any questions. Oh, yeah. Usha, just see. Dr. Mohinder. Uh, Yes. Thank you very much for such a nice presentation, Dr. Jani. Uh, I appreciate this part that uh, you are taking the reviews as industry people also. But I want to understand in, in the very beginning, uh, you have said that there is a quality audit uh, initially, uh, mm -hmm. internal quality audit and then external quality uh, audit. And that takes four years, you know, uh, for that purpose. And then uh, there is standard verification. You know, there, there is one word reassessment who do not meet the standards. They can go for re, uh, reassessment uh, after five years. Uh, I, I am confused about the time uh, plan, you know, in, in that. Kindly explain that. Thank Indeed. You. Thank you very much for the question. Um, um, we have two stages uh, that uh, form part of our accreditation processes. The first is quality audit. It's still an external quality assurance activity and it still involves uh, external reviewers. Um, but the results are uh, are. Uh, formative in nature. So, in other words, it's up to the HEI to take on board the recommendations that are made and to make sure that they um, that they become ready to undergo uh, accreditation in the future. They only ever do that once. So, this is, if you like, it's a, a way of of understanding what the standards mean and to make sure that they. Um, that they are ready to undergo this this the second part of the process. In terms of uh, the accreditation, uh, the stage two part of the process, uh, this they will undergo every five years. Um, but the five years commences from the time that they are accredited. If they if an institution is not successful in uh, uh, um, we don't. We tend to try to avoid the word success and failure. But if they don't meet the standards uh, at the first attempt through institutional standards assessment, they're given an opportunity after one year. So not after five, but after one oh. year to oh. undergo reaccreditation. Uh, re, I beg your pardon. Reassessment and reassessment means that they will um, they they must report on their um, their activities against the the standards that they were unable to meet through ESA and they if they again are unable to meet those standards then after another one year and it's uh, only one year uh, then they um, must uh, undergo a second round of of uh, reassessment and if after that they still can't meet the standards um, then we recommend uh, well we then terminate the process and we recommend uh, uh, an outcome for the board and for uh, for higher authorities so uh, so at the point when an institution becomes accredited, if they become accredited, it's five years from that point that oh. their accreditation certificate lasts. Does oh. that make it clear? Oh. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I request the participants to raise their hand if they have any questions.
Dr. Amarish Kumar. Yes, ma'am. Uh, am I audible? Yes, yes, indeed. Please. Uh, uh, good afternoon, doc Dr. Jenny Walker and Dr. Ruchi. Uh, it was a very, very thoughtful and uh, informative uh, introductions and about the woman accreditation. I just want to know one thing, what is the sustainability of the retention of the faculty? Because for every higher education, sustainability for the retention of the faculty in the higher education institution. Okay, I, I've, I can't hear you very well, I'm afraid. What is this, this the sustainability of? Uh, like this, for any higher education institution, faculty are the very crucial and important part. Yes. If there is a good good faculty, then only the higher education institutions can impart education to the students. Indeed. But in most of the higher education institutions in India, they employ the faculty for before the accreditation for about two or four months before, and after accreditation is completed, they are being weeded out. So, oh, gosh, um, no, that's uh, th that isn't a practice that we have um, seen. I, 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 I understand, but what is the check you uh, practice in Oman so that it can also be implemented in India by our NAC body? that at least we can assess that faculty is at least continuing from last three years or four years so that the institution gets a good accreditation. Mm, well, that's an interesting uh, issue. Um, we have one criteria that is involved with staff retention and uh, and also we look very carefully at the qualifications and the recruitment processes uh, and also the um the severance policies of of institutions and uh, we have different criteria under standard eight that cover all of those uh, uh, uh all of those activities and um if there's a very high turnover of staff this is something that alerts us to a problem in terms of sustainability of qualified staff. Um, no, I haven't noticed particularly in the results that this has been, uh, that, that there's been a trend that's uh, connected with the quality assurance process in terms of, um, of uh, um, severance of staff. Uh, but on the other hand, um, uh, our standards do ensure that we look carefully at uh, at at long term viable structures that include high quality faculty to make sure that the programs and and indeed institutional systems are uh, that uh, that they remain fit for purpose thank you very much this is a practice in the private institutions mostly in india mm. the government or public institutions are not doing that much but private institutions are habitual in doing this Mm, that's a worrying trend. I, I hope it um, doesn't come across the water. <laughs> um, but one, uh, if, I, if I could uh, perhaps uh, mention that our standards are uh, publicly available, and they're part of our institutional standards assessment manual, and uh, standard eight may be of interest to you uh, in terms of some of the indicators under the criteria for um, staff retention. I don't know if there might be anything there that uh, is relevant to your context. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Deepa Bhattacharya, Pusha. Pusha? Yes, ma'am. Dr. Deepa Bhattacharya wants to talk some query. Dr. Deepa Bhattacharya, he is also I raising it. Uh, I couldn't see the participant, ma'am. Dr. Deepa Bhattacharya, just make as a unmute. Just mute. Dr. Deepa Bhattacharya, he wants to ask query. Yes, Dr. Deepa, ma'am, you can ask. Hello, Dr. Deepa. 
सर्टिफिकेट्स तो इज देर एनी पॉलिसी फॉर द वेलिडिटी ऑफ द सर्टिफिकेट फाइव इयर्स सिक्स आर एंड इट्स परमानेंट सर्टिफिकेट की एनी एक्स इंस्टीट्यूशन इज एक्टेड दैट इज एक्टेड लॉन्ग लाइन uh i i'm afraid i didn't really get yeah. you there uh, the the accreditation certificate lasts for 5 years and then the uh, the uh, institution must begin uh, the process of of reaccreditation at that point and then we backdate the accred the new accreditation certificate to the the the, the first day after the previous certificate D does that answer the question Yeah, I the question is: Is there any validity time for certificate after reassessment and all the standard made by HEI? Then you produce certificate to HEI, fine. That's then right. Then after, yeah, after that is is there any validity kind of thing? Ki uh, the institution come again for accreditation or once you sub? Uh, yes, yes. Every five years. Yes, it's on a cyclical basis. Yes. Yeah, like NAG. NAG is also producing the validity certificate that is also the five year. So yes. the five years. Thank you so much, Dr. Jenny. Uh, we were, um, we we may consider moving to a six-year cycle uh, simply to give um, to give an opportunity for the HEI to prepare for the next five years, um, mm. so that they don't um, because our process takes about a year to complete from submission to the the approval of the final report. and so in order for them not to lose that year of their new accreditation uh we we're, we're considering um the possibility of moving to a six year cycle okay fine nice thank you rusia any other dr pratap dr pratap pohan dr jay may ask a question Dr. Pratap, you have been unmuted. You may ask a question now. You could write a chat message if you like. If if you'd like to ask the question in the chat. Uh, I'm afraid I can't I hear. No <laughs> I think no query. Uh, I think the Dr. Pratap may be not able to ask. Those are not able to ask. A new or new problem. The uh, the request from the participants. Please put your question on chat box. Dr. Sina, you said just see Dr. Sina raise hand. Yes, ma'am. Dr. Sina, just you may ask a question. Any query is in chat box. Usha, Q A box or chat box? Any query is there? Usha, yes, ma'am. Uh, in chat there is a query. Ah, uh, please read out. Yeah, it's from uh, Himalata Dadmani. Huh? Uh, its number of admissions is part of assessment. No. Um. Well. Um. I need to nuance that a little bit. Uh. we don't uh, we don't engage in ranking in any way um and all our all our standards and all the related um um uh, criteria the 79 criteria they're all generic in nature so they fit a variety of different contexts and that includes the size of operation it includes um various uh Uh, different external factors and 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 different objectives in terms of the HEI's own strategic goals. Um, 
But that said, I mean, obviously, a, an external review panel will look at things like um, qu uh, whether um, there is an adequate staff student ratio uh, uh, as judged against the commentary that's um, that's given by the institution in terms of need. So, uh, obviously. different programs in different ways, depending on the needs of 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 a particular activity within higher education. So, um, so yes, they will look at things like size of admission and whether that admission is dropping. And if so, why is there a reason for that? Um, over the last few years, because of various uh, economic factors and external factors, um, there have been a large number of of, uh, of scholarships that have been funded by the government, and um, so this has meant that um, that that there are uh, similarities in terms of the kinds of admissions received by uh, uh, private institutions. At any rate, um, is is Thank that you. the full spread of that? Question. <laughs> Is there another question? Uh, from Dr. Pratap. The question is, is there any surprise visit within the five years? Um, no, we don't do that. Um, the role of following up on the we and also our standards assessment doesn't result in in recommendations, unlike the quality audit, um, it it we express the results either in terms of of, of meeting or not meeting uh, the criteria. So, um, but it's then the role of the Ministry of Higher Education to follow up in those areas where uh, an institution hasn't met the standards. Um, we like to uh, make sure that we work with institutions we 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 don't set ourselves up as a as a judgment body per se uh, that goes to spot check um we we're there in collaboration with the sector to make sure that uh, the whole sector arrives at a, a condition of uh, enhanced quality assurance within higher education um rather than um, setting up an us and then kind of situation. Um, so in terms of following up on the the uh, the, the um, whether an institution has actually carried out the improvements that are needed uh, if they haven't met the standards, uh, this is carried out through our reassessment process, but that's not uh, undertaken. Um, uh, secretively, that's undertaken in the full knowledge of when that process will take place and how it will take place. And part of our process is sitting down with the institution and actually planning the program for the uh, visiting panels. So uh, it, it, it's more of a collaborative approach, can I put it like that, rather than uh, one of monitoring and judgment. Thank you, ma'am. Um, there is another question from Amarish Kumar. The question is, whether in Oman you also put your accreditation assessment on the sports and youth development of the students or only academic part? Um, sorry, I missed the middle part of that. Could you repeat that, please? In, sure. in Oman? Whether in Oman you also put your accreditation assessment on the sports and youth development of the students or only academic part? Ah, that's a very good question. We, we do have an element, a, a criteria that covers, um, uh, in fact, we have a whole standard of, of, in terms of community engagement. And a part of our whole mandate is about making sure that quality assurance covers national priorities and so uh, uh, part of what we look for in an institution is that they have addressed um, 
uh, elements of national priority at a given time. So, uh, for example, currently there's a, um, a an emphasis on entrepreneurialism uh, and also on on citizenship. And so, obviously, a, a, an inst a, an institution will want to report on how they meet those two um, uh, criteria that cover the, those kinds of areas. Um, and um, sport obviously is one way in which institutions are able to um, comment on how they engage uh, in in a community, engage their students in community activities, and and establish principles such as um, um, uh, citizenship and and. Uh, respect for others and, and so forth. So, um, no, we don't have a criterion on sports per se, but we do have ones that offer institutions an opportunity to comment on their strengths in those areas, because all those are all uh, part of uh, an extracurricular experience that makes campus life worthwhile and, and value added. So, yes, it's covered, but not explicitly. Um, actually, there's another way in which we cover that too, and that is through facilities. Um, how we ask institutions, how do they know that they have provided the, in, the kinds of facilities that students feel are important for them? And very often sports uh, um, uh, facilities are something that are very close to a student's heart. So that's another way in which uh, HEIs can comment on uh, their provision in that area. I hope that I answers no, the question. Yeah, I think no question. Uh, thank you, Dr. Jenny, for answered all the questions very patiently. Thank you, Dr. Jenny. So finally, we came to the end of the program for delivering a formal vote of thanks. So first and foremost, I thank our director, Professor S.C. Sarma, sir, for his support in organizing this event. Thank you so much, sir, and for also guiding and always encourage us to the organize this kind of program international webinar. So thank you so much, sir. I also express my heartful thanks to Dr. Jenny Walker from Oman. Dr. Jenny, on behalf of National Assessment and Accreditation Council, I thank you for your accepting our invitation to be a speaker for the international webinar of NAC. Thank you once again. Thank you. I thank Dr. Devin Kaure, sir, Deputy Advisor NAC, for his support to make this event as a great su success. Thank you, sir. I also thank all the distinguished participants across the globe for sparing your valuable time for making this program successful. Before concluding, the, let me express my sincere gratitude and appreciation to coordination of the program, Dr. Amir Kumar Rath, sir, Dr. B.S. Ponvidras, Dr. Devan Kaure, Deputy Advisor, Mrs. Pustya Lakshmi for making this program memorable. Uh, we have been fortunate enough to back by our team, very motivated, dedicated colleagues like advisors, deputy advisor, assistant advisor, consultant, academic, administrative staff, as well as finance staff, all the good hearts who work behind the screen. Last but not the least, I thank our NAC ICT team for their cooperation in making their event uh, very soundful. Thank you once again. Uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Jenny. Thank you once again. Okay. Bye bye, Dr. Jenny. Shukram, Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Touch in email. Thank you so much. So we leave the program. Thank you and bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Pushya, any other? Close. Yes, ma'am. Sure.